Okay, so the little motor that I have is too small a motor for this coil test function. So I'm going to round about 15 kVA motor to get this to read. So what I do have is a set of coils of wire that I was winding some coils with. So these are actually full rolls at the moment. I also have a slightly smaller roll there as well. So I can demo the coil test function with these three coils of wire and they're configured in, if you like, a star mode at the moment. So one of the winding coils is open to the coil test. The other two probes are directly across the other two coil endings. That's from the coil adapter and then the coil adapter is plugged into the instrument on the insulation test and coil test function. And instead of using this button for the insulation test, I now move to this button, which is the coil test. Let's right back on again. And again with this, you have to hold it on to get a reading. As soon as I let go, the reading will go. So that's 107 microseconds. You lose the reading, but it is retaining a three-phase test function. So I'll move on to the other winding and then press the button again. And you see it's got a number two, we're 106 this time. And it's stable goes into discharge and this little bar graph up here is telling me the difference between the readings that it's gained so the final reading is on there test it again 108 goes into voltage discharge so I've, unless I've written them down you've lost all three of the actual readings now but what you do end up with is the recorded differential between them and got some metrics say if it goes over 10 percent that's indicative of shorts between the turns of a winding and to demo that little section what i can do is just replace one of these coils with so i've used some wire off of this coil and i've used around about two and a half layers which is something like 70 turns in comparison to these two coils so this has got 70 turns less so we'll put them onto there start off a new set of three phase readings just flip on the buttons quickly and then go again and you can see the difference in the coil value it's 95 microseconds this time that's coil two 95 again and then the final one see so that's 109 and you can see now the differential has jumped up to around about 15 percent so again it's lost all those actual values but it retains the differential about 15 percent there and that's the Coil test completed, quite quick and easy to do, unique to this instrument as far as I'm aware. I've not seen another instrument from another manufacturer that does a coil test in this manner. It does tend to eat up battery life, as you can see, and the battery pack is quite small on this. It's just two uh, batteries, um, but yeah, uh, quite unique. If you have a lot of motors where you've been having to turn faults on the state of windings, could be an instrument that's good for you. Um, but very very uh, expensive in comparison to a lot of the other instruments out there so you're only really going to go down this route if you do have the need for interturn testing and the other problem is it's really not that brilliant an insulation tester so you probably find that you need another insulation tester as well as this instrument you really do need to do a bit of work on the insulation test function as far as i'm concerned to bring it up to comparison to a lot of the other manufacturers out there